Hi, my name's Ed Whitaker and I'm a performance nutritionist. Today I'm going to be sharing all my top nutrition tips for you to help you build more muscle. So it's pretty well researched and pretty well known that protein is really important when it comes to building muscle. But it's not just protein in general, we've got to look at a few different bits and the biggest for me is the total protein intake for the day. So. Can you have too much? Can you have too little? If you have too little protein, then you are not giving your muscles the building blocks they need to repair and to recover. And if you have too much, you could just be wasting your money, wasting food uh, and all that sort of stuff. People say too much protein can be bad for your kidneys. There is no real known research that shows that a high protein diet can cause bad side effects and stuff like that to your kidneys. So the research really varies for how much protein you should have, but it's pretty conclusive that you should be having somewhere between 1.5 and 2 grams per kilo of body weight. So some researchers look at the lower ends, 1.7 to 2 grams, and some studies have even looked up to 3 grams per kilo of body weight. But the truth really lies somewhere in the middle. So with all my clients, I tend to put them on around 2 grams per kilo of body weight. And that is for the day. If you're a 100 kg male or female and you're on 2 grams per kilo of body weight, you'd be on 200 grams of protein for the day. So my second nutritional tip is protein timing. There is a thing called muscle protein synthesis and this is basically the rebuilding of your muscles. And when we digest protein, the amino acids from that protein spike this process called muscle protein synthesis. All the rebuilding of the muscles kind of happens. But then once this spike starts to come back down again, these processes kind of slow down. So we need to keep this spike topping up. As soon as that process comes back down to baseline, we want to try and trigger it again. So this is where the timing of protein can be quite important. It was a really good study and they had three different groups. One group had eight servings of 10 grams of protein. One group had four servings of 20 grams of protein and the final group had two servings of 40 grams of protein. The first one had 10 grams of protein every hour and a half and that didn't even spike muscle protein synthesis. The protein amount was too small, the window was too short. Second group, these saw the biggest results. They had four servings of 20 grams of protein, and those servings were three hours apart. And it is thought that the amino acid profile within 20 grams of protein is the perfect amount. So that is enough time for the spike to happen and then to come back down again. The final group with the two servings of 40 grams of protein was too much of a gap because they had their feeding every six hours. They didn't really keep that spike topped up. So from this research and plenty of others that have conducted similar research, it is pretty well known that we need at least 20 grams of protein per serving. And we also need to look at the timing and that would be every sort of two to four hours. Look to plan your protein feedings as many as you can. If you can get five or six protein feedings in, in a day, that is brilliant. My third top tip is being in a calorie surplus. So if you are eating more than your body burns, you are then in a calorie surplus. And this is the ideal setting for your body to build muscle. There's some very good studies out there that show when you are in a calorie deficit, that muscle protein synthesis just it doesn't work quite as well as it does as when you're in a surplus. There was one study that showed the participants gaining 8% more fat-free mass over 12 weeks, so that's muscle tissue. When in a calorie surplus, it's putting our body in a perfect kind of growing position. So you have to take this with a slight pinch of salt. There has to be some common sense used as well because not everybody wants to keep putting on more body weight. So my fourth top tip is the macronutrient split. We have three main macronutrients. We have fats, protein, and carbs and we need to now split these up per meal roughly so we can get the most benefit from them. So let's look at protein first. So if we go off the earlier recommendation of around two grams per kilo of body weight, you're a 100 kg person, um, so that's 200 grams of protein, perfect. We can now split that into however many meals we want for the day. When we look at fats, one gram per kilo of body weight it is pretty good, it is then enough fat for you to get all the health benefits. Fat being nine calories per gram of fat, that comes at a calorie consequence as well. And so around a gram per kilo of body weight is brilliant. Then we look at carbohydrates. And basically, if you've got a calorie allowance, if you've got 
2000 calories say, it tends to be whatever's left. But if you're looking at it from purely a performance point of view, you would look for anything more than three grams per kilo of body weight for carbohydrates. That will top up your energy supply, it will give you enough energy then for the day and for your training sessions and that sort of stuff. But also, to bear in mind with carbohydrates, some people think that more is better, not necessarily. There were some studies that looked at carbohydrate intake and they compared 65% to 40% of the diet being carbohydrates. And there was no difference in performance. So don't think that necessarily you need to have more and more and more to make your training better. It's not necessarily the case. So my fifth nutritional tip for gaining more muscle is to fuel your sessions. If you are training in the morning, that's kind of one story, but if we're training later in the day, then we can look to have a meal uh, before that training session. So anywhere up to two hours before the training session is perfect. That gives everything time then to digest um, and then be where it needs to be. And that is then going to allow us to train to the best of our abilities. There's no point in having all your training right if you're going to go into the gym with no energy and just flop after the first set. Two hours before the training session, what do we need to be eating? Well, fats take a long time to digest. They take a long time to exit the digestion system and the stomach and to kind of process. So we need to keep the fats down in this pre-training meal. Same with protein. Protein takes a longer time to digest. So we need to keep the protein moderate, but still around that 20 gram mark to get the benefits of muscle protein synthesis. So carbohydrates are gonna form the bulk of this meal. Now this doesn't have to be for every meal, this is just the pre-training meal. So I look at carbohydrates being the main bulk of this meal. So my sixth and final top nutritional tip for gaining more muscle is your post-gym routine. Your body is in a muscle building and muscle recovery state for around about 24 hours after you've trained. Um, and then it is also shown that anywhere sort of between 45 minutes and 150 minutes um, that your body is in a very anabolic state so you should take advantage of this. Um, it can stay in this state for about four hours or so if you are fasted, if you're not eating after your training session, but we want to take advantage of muscle protein synthesis here. So having at least 20 grams of protein post-training is going to be really, really beneficial. We want to not necessarily have this as soon as we finish, as soon as we finish that last set, but within an hour or so, we would be wanting to have a protein serving um, because this is gonna just benefit muscle protein synthesis. It's going to kickstart that rebuilding process. And if we wait too long, then we are potentially missing out on a protein serving for that day as well. If though you have a huge protein serving, 50, 60 grams of protein after you trained, this could actually be detrimental to the whole recovery process because it's gonna take that long for your protein to digest into the system and to absorb that you could have had two servings in that amount of time and that is going to be more beneficial than the one big serving. If you are somebody that trains very regularly so every day of the week or you have multiple sessions whether you have a gym session and then a cardio session later on in the day you might want to look at combining carbohydrates and protein together. This doesn't necessarily help with muscle protein synthesis improve, it's not going to make you bigger and stronger after the gym, it's not going to make you particularly recover any quicker, but it is going to allow you to quickly refuel your body to then go on to the next training session. So those were my top six nutritional tips for building more muscle. We had protein amount, protein timing, being in a calorie surplus, macro split, and we also had fueling your session and then your post-gym routine. My name's Edward Whittaker, thank you for watching.